Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And today we're gonna to continue our coverage of the Carnage series by Jerry Conway with volume two, which is called Sea Devil. Uh, and this, I like the title of this one and I like the first issue of this one and we're gonna get into that. But uh, I will say, I know a lot of you guys are excited about the series and are fans of this series. I'm still not 100% sold. So get ready to disagree with me on stuff, I'm sure. And if you do, you know, upvote me, downvote me, and let me know your thoughts in the comments. Um, and I especially like, you know, when people downvote, I don't mind the downvote. So, you know, typically I want people to interact with this channel. So if you don't agree with me, that's fine. But I do want to hear why you don't agree with me. Um, because it helps me learn. It, you know, helps give us a chance to maybe me elaborate on what I'm thinking if, I, if I'm not clear in these videos. And then same with uh, you, we can, you know, elaborate more in the comments and it gives us a chance to have a discourse so even if you agree with me or disagree with me i'd love to hear your thoughts if you have time to leave them down below uh so if so please do because I, I love the discourse and especially like swordsman i really like swordsman because he challenges me a lot and eddie's mullet does sometimes too and a couple of other people um they'll come in there'll be people that have supportive things they say which i love and that's also great to hear and then we talk back and forth and then i have people who just go hey man i vehemently disagree with you and here's why and there's a great discourse with it too so if you're either one, like I, I love having that on my channel, so you know, share your thoughts down below if you can. So this series though, I love Jerry Conway, very talented writer, uh, has written a lot of great Spider-Man stuff, particularly some of the early Man Wolf stuff, which is cool because Man Wolf is in these stories. And then you have Mike Perkins, who's the artist on it, who I love Mike Perkins. I love his stuff that he did with The Stand, and I like a lot of the other stuff he's done at Marvel over the years and, and other companies that he's worked for. But, um, I, you know, so I thought this was like the perfect marriage. I'm like, all right, it's Carnage, it's Conway, it's Perkins. Like, this is pretty cool. <laughs> um, and so I was excited to read this book and finally get to it. And as I'm reading it, I, I think maybe it's just because I look at the creative team and my expectations went a little higher than maybe I didn't set my expectations more middle ground which is normally I like to go into things in a more middle uh, stance so that way I'm kind of surprised by things and and uh, and then you know formulate opinions without out, like any kind of outside interference but I think with this one maybe I let some of the outside interference and my um, love for the creative team maybe pump me up a little too much uh, in this regard. And that kind of happened with Donnie Cates too on the, the Venom run because I was very excited before he jumped on that book. And then as the book progressed, I got less and less excited. Uh, but this, I'm not that bad. Like this is still, it's a middle of the road story for me as far as like, I, I'm not like, I don't hate it and I don't overly love it. I think it's like a six or a seven for me so far, um, which is not bad. I mean, it's still a good rating, um, but I just, I guess I was expecting it to be more of like an 8 or a 9 or something higher, uh, maybe even a 10, I don't know. But uh, but when I was reading this, I was like, yeah, I don't know, it's not delivering. And the reason why, so let's get into some of the basics. And again, I'm going to kind of do what I did with the first one and give an overview of just my random thoughts on this. Because this story, especially this one, is kind of told non-linearly, like it's not in order. And uh, that kind of surprised me because issue one, I loved. It's basically this girl named Jubilee, I think is her name. And she, uh, and I think uh, Carnage calls her Jujubee or whatever. He's like, trying to pronounce her name and he can't. Um, but she's like this 16 year old girl who her father died and she's out on the open sea trying to sail around the world in her father's memory. Pretty nice story actually. And then Carnage, she just finds him in the middle of the ocean holding on to the dark hold and he's like looks like he's been blown up <laughs> and so he's like you know slowly healing but he looks damaged and, and, and in pain so she pulls him up into the boat wraps a blanket around him puts him downstairs finds the dark hold brings it up starts looking through it uh, and then wondering who he is and then he wakes up and he's fully healed because obviously carnage will the symbiote will do that to him and then he starts having a discourse with this young girl and reveals that he's carnage and then he tries to kill her so it's almost like a like one of the Friday the 13th movies where they open up, I think it's the eighth one, <laughs> where it starts in Crystal Lake, and then somehow that boat, or a, a different boat, ends up in New York City. <laughs> like, it doesn't make any sense, uh, you know, location-wise. But, um, but because it's a lake, <laughs> how does a lake get to the main? Anyway, whatever, it doesn't matter. That's a different rant. Um, but so you have this young girl who is uh, who's now trapped on her little boat, with carnage so she goes under deck and she you know she's like crawling through the the bottom area where you store stuff and then coming out to the other side grabs the life raft blows it up real quick throws it in the water gets in and then as she's floating away from 
Cletus. She, you know, blows her boat up with Cletus and Carnage on it. Um, so that was cool. I was like, wow, this is this is kind of what I wanted in the first issue was someone who it's like a horror movie where they have to survive an experience with Carnage. And this girl is very clever and she's able to do it. And uh, and then she go, kind of goes out to sea. And then next thing you know, it um, she, she like looks up and sees John Jameson, uh, Claire Dixon, um, Montessi, this new uh, this Well, I think she's been around for a while because uh, she's part of the Children of the Midnight story that um, or, or storyline and characters that are looking after the Darkhold. So she shows up and she's, I guess, uh, funding uh, Claire Dixon's disbanded Carnage unit because her Carnage task force obviously didn't do that great of a job containing Carnage in the first story and kind of made it worse because now he's a Carnage with a Darkhold book uh, even though he's missing a page um, but he's still out there looking for answers and uh, and now they found her on this boat you know found him on this boat and it got blown up uh, but obviously he's still alive out there and they're trying to find him so they rescue this girl and then the next issue jumps like a week or two before the events of the first issue and then for like two issues like normally it's it's weird because i had this once where i was editing a comic called thaniel uh from uh, my uh, previous uh, supervisor and boss and friend uh, omar and we were going back and forth on this idea that he wanted a whole issue to, to be a flashback issue um and I, like after the first issue was present day he wanted issue two and i think some of three to be flashback and i said well that's fine but at least structurally it makes sense to start the book in present day do the flashback and then end the book back in present day that way the reader isn't completely jarred when they're buying it monthly like of course when you if you're planning for a graphic novel it'll read differently as a graphic novel in that regard but for the monthly book which is the form it comes out in first you should kind of plan for that and you know and still have it make sense for the overall story so my suggestion as an editor was open the book in present day do 20 pages of flashback, and then the last page can be back to present day. That way the reader is who liked issue one is still knowing what's happening. This book doesn't do that. It just kind of, after that first issue, it's just boom, a couple weeks ago in the next issue. So you open it up and it's like, wait, what? <laughs> and in, in some of the other issues, they do cut back to the present day, which which is fine. But it was just jarring to be like, wait, where are we in the story now? Because I thought, I thought Cletus was on this boat with this girl and that got blowed up. It, where's the girl at? Where's uh, uh, Jubilee or whatever? And she's not in, I think, uh, issues, uh, 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 I think it's six through ten in this graphic novel. And she's not in issues seven, I think, or eight. Or if she is, it's like a brief moment later where they cut to the present. Um, so, yeah, so for two issues, you see the, the task force that has been disbanded kind of re-coming back together. So you have Claire Dixon, uh, John Jameson, um, Eddie Brock. They're all in different parts of uh, the world or the government, you know, keeping them in lockdown or getting answers from them and stuff. There's a guy named Singh that shows up to join their team. And uh, this lady, like I said, Montessi, who is funding it now. She's like, all right, I want to get your team back together. I understand you failed last time, but you're still my best chance at tracking Carnage, especially since one of the girls has the page that she tore out from the first uh, run. So they're like, okay, let's let's pull our sources together. I have the money. Let's bring your band back together and let's go after Carnage. Uh, and so that's kind of what they do. And they still have the button to keep Eddie Brock in line if they need him to, if they need to. Uh, and of course he's like still being a weird, creepy dude. He's like on lockdown. Uh, they have him under surveillance and they're asking him questions and, you know, about his team and Claire Dixon and stuff. And then they come to bust him out. You know, Man Wolf shows up and busts Eddie Brock out, but they say, look, we have the button. We can turn you into toxin. So behave, and we'll you know we'll give you what you want. We'll let you be toxin, and we'll help you know you can help us take down Carnage uh, and get your revenge for because he made us all look stupid. So okay, Eddie Brock's back on the team. But he's still kind of an annoying douchebag and uh, not uh, not an Eddie Brock I tip you know kind of like. But he he's getting there. I think Swordsman and other people pointed out that he does have an arc in this story. So we'll obviously see where that goes in the the final six issues when we discuss that. But in these ones, he's still just kind of the guy from the first arc that I don't really like that much. But I could see the the path he's on, and I'm I'm hoping it, it gets better for him. Because uh, in this one, I still wasn't thrilled with Eddie Brock. Um, but so now you have that. They go and they track down Cletus. Uh, he's He found this guy named Grigori, who tells him about another altar, which is what Cletus needs. He needs another altar to uh, perform the ritual, to complete what the guys in the first uh, series did, and the first graphic novel did, and they were unsuccessful at. 
Carnage needs to complete that uh, whole process. So he needs another altar like the one from the first one that was in West Virginia, and he finds out that it's in Indonesia. So he like you know takes this uh, guy, uh, Grigori guy, uh, hostage. So all these guys who are like robed and they're like you know the Red Slayer, he's going to lead us to you know our, our God and everything like that. Like Cletus is not playing that game at all, and these robed idiots uh, are just that. They're just idiots. Like they 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 blindly believe this thing, and Carnage at every turn just like you know kills them and uh, exploits them, um, and then uses them to get what he wants uh so it's kind of funny that all of them were like worshiping him and he turns out not to be the thing he, he turns out to be a thing they, they shouldn't have worshipped because he's their doom and i like that i mean that's that's awesome because <laughs> screw cults and all that stuff uh so when they meet their demise i'm like yeah okay yeah that's what well, sorry you're dumb enough to follow this cult like that that's dumb things happen <laughs> he win dumb prizes um so, uh, so Cletus, he's like chained up. Like they actually got the jump on Cletus and they're like, yeah, we can, you know, we know ways to trick the Red Slayer, you know, the symbiote or whatever. And so that's when he goes, wait a minute, all these spells and everything you're using against me to where you get the upper hand, it's, it only works on, uh, on Carnage. And he goes, yeah, you, the Red Slayer. And he goes, yeah, but there's, even though I say I am Carnage, he goes, there are two of us in here. So he retracts Carnage and just turns into Cletus Cassidy, and from there he's able to like break free because the chains on the they're like weak chains, but they have spells written on them. They only work, I guess, when the, the symbiote is present. So when it all goes back in and he's just Cletus, I guess he's able to break out of it. I don't know, whatever. I, I understand the story point of like they needed to have him break out and they wanted to do something semi clever. It's fine. It works for me. <laughs> it's it's all right. Uh, but but him on that freighter. Uh, killing a lot of the guys and then actually starting to turn some of them. So basically what he's doing, even though he's missing that page, he's using the dark holding, getting better at, at turning people. Um, in fact, in the first issue with the girl on the boat, uh, Jubilau, he actually um, does tries to do the ritual with her and she doesn't die right away. Uh, she actually gets something happens to her. Her eyes turn red and she can kind of see carnage in a way. So that's why the team needs her. And we're going to find that out as the story progresses. Um, but because they, we're still not there yet. Like the, the first issue took place in the present day. This all that I'm talking about now and the freightering with Grigori and the, the robed people, this all happening like days leading up to that. So the freighter of this whole story that takes up like two or three issues of this book is all about carnage. Um, T testing out the book and getting better at it and and you know grilling Grigori for answers and what ends up happening is he starts turning some of these people on this boat uh, instead of killing them he's turning them into like carnage hybrids kind of like how he had an army of carnages in the first issue and he doesn't exactly know how, or the first story arc and he didn't exactly know how he did it because uh, the ritual wasn't fully completed so he's trying to do it now so that way when he gets to the altar he'll have perfected it so i kind of like that like carnage is like i want to learn this way of converting people and, and you know because he is a master of killing people for sure but uh but as we've seen in carnage usa and some of the other stories he and like even at, you know uh, maximum carnage and stuff like as far back as that he does like building a surrogate family to some extent too there's still something inside Cletus that is yearning for some kind of surrogate family but clearly one he wants to control and stuff you know and he wants to murder others so um so yeah I, want, I always wonder what a world would look like where Cletus Cassidy actually succeeded in his mission converted a bunch of people and then ran out of humans to kill like I want I wonder what that would be like that Marvel zombie story where they then have to go out into the cosmos to find other planets to kill yeah, I don't know. It's a, maybe there's a neat what if story there at some point, like a really dark what if story uh, where Carnage rules the universe. Um, but uh, but yeah, so this story though, after the freighter stuff and after Carnage is practicing his his rituals and he's getting better at it, um, that's when we we start getting back to the present day stuff where we cut back to Jubilee on the boat with John Jameson and everyone who you know found her at the end of issue six, and now they're telling her the story of you know, what they're doing, what their mission is, you know, who that guy was on, on her boat, and she's starting to learn stuff. And then also she's seeing through red eyes, she can see where Carnage is going. And based on the missing page, which they still have in their possession, and what Jubilee sees, they know he's heading to Indonesia to look for this other altar. So they're just kind of tracking him. And the book kind of ends with Jubilee uh, talking to Claire Dixon. And they're like, well, there's, and she's like, yeah, your friend, she shook my hand. We both had like a, a like a seizure in a way, like we had this like uh, immense force hit us, and um, and I blacked out, and that's where they find Jubilee on the boat, you know, just passed out, and then the last issue, and she wakes up, and they're like, "What happened?" She's like, "Yeah, your friend Claire Dixon, we shook hands, and then I blacked out," and they're like, "Claire Dixon," she's like, "Yeah, she's part of your crew, wasn't she?" Uh, you know, uh, she 
came up and introduced herself when you guys were downstairs talking after you, you know, briefed me. And and she came up to the deck to talk to me, and then she shook my hand, and and they're like, Claire Dixon died. And then so they cut back to like we were like, wait a minute, what? She died. And they cut back to what's happened on the freighter leading up to them, you know, finding Cletus or, or finding this girl and her, you know, destroyed boat and stuff. And the last moments of the freighter, you find out that Claire Dixon was taken by Cletus Cassidy, and he's starting to perfect finally after converting a bunch of people um, and turning them into half carnage hybrids that you know agent toxin has to take down along with man wolf and the team and sing and everybody um, they all fight all these hybrids but claire actually gets turned into almost like a new symbiote called raze r-a-z-e and she shows up to um to start battling the team so you have a battle with man wolf and her i guess and toxin and her uh, and then man wolf and carnage and toxin and carnage and so everyone kind of fights and then they seemingly destroy Cletus or he explodes or whatever. Um, and then he falls out in the sea, Raze, it looks like she gets killed in the in the battle too. So that's why they're saying Claire Dixon is dead because they're like, wait a minute, she blew up with Cletus. Uh, but they're like, yeah, but Cletus lived and he made it to this young girl's boat back in issue six. Um, so maybe she's still alive too. And then you see her actually hanging on the side of their boat as they're you know talking about that and uh, and you know with the symbiote like coming out of her so claire dixon is still alive and she's a new symbiote hybrid creature thing made through the dark hold and carnage called rays and so she's hanging on to their boat at the end of the book cletus obviously is out there he survived the girl's uh, boat explosion when she left him on her little tiny boat and blew it up um he survived that and now he's made it to indonesia and then you have uh you know the girl now in custody i guess or working with the team even though she's 16 she can't officially work for them uh but because she can see you know carnage like you know what he sees with her new powers or whatever that she has um she's an asset to the team and so as they're hunting carnage so that's where the book ends is them going okay we're, we're going into the final stretch here we're going to head to indonesia and we're going to track down carnage so it is kind of jumps all over the place like i said two or three issues take place before issue six and it's not very linear but it's it's not like i was lost I was just kind of like, again, as an editor, I I probably, because I've done it in the past, would have said, hey, start this issue like this and end it like this. And Conway does do that later, I think in issue eight, eight or nine. But I think issue seven was purely a flashback story. or One of them was. It, I remember being a little jarred for a second and then going, oh, I see what he's doing. But yeah, if I was an editor, I probably would have gave him this note. Not that he would have had to listen to it, but it would have been a note I gave. Um so, uh, so yeah, I don't know if you agree with me or disagree with me. I like when, if you're going to do a flashback issue, but it's in the middle of the main story, do you prefer the first and last page of the book to be set in present day? So that way you're, you're, you're locked into the, okay, this event is still happening. Where I left off in the last issue is still happening, but now I need this. I mean, uh, Nick Spencer does it a lot with uh, his Spider-Man run, like Sinister War right now. If you buy Sinister War number one and read that, that's a complete story. But then if you pick up the Amazing Spider-Man issue that takes place bef between Sinister War 1 and 2, it kind of goes, okay, here's what's happening leading up to issue 2 um, and currently, you know, and working side by side with issue 1 uh, with some flashback stuff. So he's, I think him and his editor do a really good job of, of balancing that. And so I would, I personally would have liked to see that here. It didn't take me out of the story. I understood the story Conway's telling. But it also is just one that I, I feel like there's a lot of rinse and repeating. It's like, oh, hooded people in the first issue and they're telling, you know, the first story and they're telling Cletus about the altar and he's got to do the sacrifice. And then now Carnage is on his way to do that again. And so it, it seems like already in this 16 issue series, we're already repeating elements that were in the first five issues in the second five issues. And I'm like, oh, wow, that's too soon to be repeating stuff and having this many similarities. Um, so that's what I mean by this is not a good second act for me i like the introduction of some of the characters like jubilio and bringing montessi in with the children of midnight I'm, I'm hoping this builds to something big and now now i'm trying to reset my expectations for the third and final story which we'll get to here soon i'll definitely review it in the next day or two and, and share it with you guys or discuss it i should say not really review it um but i'll try to do that next day or two and get that up to you guys and uh, so we can get to Red Goblin and finally finish this Carnage Week stuff and then wrap up our summer of Carnage stuff so we can get to the Peter Parker stuff sometime in August, hopefully. So, um, so yeah, so I, I don't know. I'm like 50-50. Like I said, I would give this maybe like a 6 or a 7 out of 10. Like I can't really commit to one number or the other because there were elements I liked 
and overall I understood where he was going for. Some of the critiques I have are personal critiques, so I don't want to try to take that out of the story too much or take it out on the story. But I will say I'm I'm a little whelmed by this. I'm not I'm not like underwhelmed uh, or overwhelmed. I'm just kind of like whelmed. I'm just like eh, it's all it's fine. Like it's a it's an okay story. I'm still intrigued to see where it goes, but I feel like some characters are you know like they're trying to make a big deal out of some of these other characters and and not a big deal out of characters that I think should be a big deal like you're tracking down Carnage I feel like Eddie Brock should be a little bit more in the forefront to some degree um maybe we'll get that in the next arc or the final arc but and and then also introducing another symbiote like I don't know it's it's just it always every time I feel like like I said we always talk about that every story feels like with symbiotes it's either symbiotes taking over the planet or it's a, a new symbiote being born or created um or you know something along those lines or it's you know venom versus carnage like it's like the same three stories they tell over and over this one i thought was going to be different because they bring in the dark hold element but it's it's still starting to feel like same old same old um and so for that reason i'm kind of like huh, just whelmed by it but if you have a, a similar opinion or different opinion whatever it is definitely let me know down below and as always we'll continue the conversation down there and i've talked long enough about this this is about 20 minute video now so uh so i'm gonna head uh, head to bed now but uh thank you so much for watching this as always i really do appreciate uh, everything and uh and we will hopefully have a new trailer coming very soon um hopefully you know i'll get to more of this soon and then by the end of august we'll have got through the Peter Parker stuff as well. So if you're curious to see the Peter Parker symbiote saga and then see how this concludes, you know, give us a subscription, uh, hit hit the like button, you know, uh, send, send a comment down below, whatever it is, we'd love to see you back here uh, for the finale of this and also for the stuff we have coming up and also for all the discussions we're going to have for the new movie Venom, Let There Be Carnage. So thank you so much for watching the show as always. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace.